route. Experience and they know how to act. Do it together so that we know what to expect in the future should we have to, to confront something like this. Morning, Marie. Life as they know it is cut off. What did I get myself into? We have a massive tragedy that we've never as a school district or as a community dealt with before. She was very caring. Thank everybody for the support that everybody has shown. Let's go, here we go. The human spirit is alive and well. Who knew that West Texas's diverse weather and flat landscape would attract a multi-million dollar corporation to run their business? The company is Bridgestone, formerly known as Firestone, and they say our area is perfect for testing their tires. We designed that surface to, to push the tire to the limits in every corner. And they've been pushing those limits ever since 1955. 6,000 acres and eight different tracks make up the Bridgestone Proving Ground. Some of them look like normal everyday tracks that you see in cities, you know, in the Midwest with broken asphalt and potholes and concrete highway joints for uh, ride comfort testing and uh, noise measurements, interior noise measurements. Others are designed to look like a racetrack. Take, for example, this wet handling track. And what would a story about a test track be without me seeing firsthand just how well these tires work? Well, Jim, what do you say? Let's step on it. Let's go. Between the swift turns and high speeds, let's just say these men have one thrilling and important job. We need to, for our drivers, to fully understand the, the uh, handling of the, the car so it becomes uh, intuitive for them and they can concentrate on how the tires are performing. One of the tracks even holds a world record. Back in uh, 1987, A.J. Foyt actually set a world speed record here. So the record is the highest average speed over around a closed circuit for a complete lap, and that was 257 miles per hour in an Oldsmobile Aerotech. But what makes this testing ground stand out even more so is that they make it a priority to take part in community events, not to mention the majority of their staffers are locals. 60 years and counting, those here at Bridgestone's tire testing facility say Fort Stockton will always be their home. Reporting in Fort Stockton, Deanne Lopez, CBS 7 News. I just want them to see a time that was just an awesome time to be alive. The 60s have arrived at Garden City High. I just want to bring back a time that was simpler, more fun. From records to memorabilia, everything is authentic. Even the napkin holders have ads, not printed from the internet, but cut out from 1960s magazines. After 40 years in education, food supervisor Rianne McKinnon brought an idea to life. There's so many rules and regulations these days in school that you know, I just want to step back and enjoy it. And I want them to enjoy school. School is all about learning. And now that includes lunch. That's kind of my goal, is to let them learn something without them having to think about it. She did this for the kids, but even the adults love the makeover. Uh, she's always been creative and tried to find ways for the students to have a good time and, and still learn. Ran paid for it out of her own pocket, but doesn't know the cost. What she does know, her gift to the school will keep people smiling. The school has no plans to change the newly decorated cafeteria. Rand's legacy will live on even after she's no longer here. In Garden City, Julia Thatcher, CBS 7 News. Power on and check your feed. It's ingrained into our daily routine. But somewhere in that routine lies a temptation more and more people are giving into. In a relationship outside of your physical relationship, that would include any form of social media, be it text, be it uh, Facebook, be it Instagram, um, Twitter, anything that you have to turn a switch on. Susie Marquez, the clinical director at Samaritan Counseling Center, has seen it all. She says since the creation of social media, it has brought on a whole new set of relationship problems. More access people have to social media, easier access to cross 
a boundary that they might not have done it would if it would be a face-to-face -face interaction. It doesn't make it feel as if you're doing something wrong. She says the thrill of connectivity is causing a real-life disconnection. It, it's so prevalent because we have access to it 24-7. It's even brought on a new term, back burner relationships. An Indiana University study found that Facebook users and relationships frequently use the site to keep in touch with a platonic friend should their current relationship go south. In the study, men reported twice as many back burners than women. But situations like these are a gradual process. Like, well, you're constantly nagging me, so they're talking to a person, oh, my wife is constantly nagging me. And then that's where the lines start to get crossed. If you cannot have that discussion with your, your spouse, but you're having that discussion with someone else, you have developed an emotional relationship that you don't have with your significant other. A digital disconnect is something West Texan Rob Jenkins knows all about. It's, it's been a problem, a consistent problem, actually. Currently single, the local business owner says social media has changed the dating game. If people like you, they're going to let you know. They're going to let you know. Uh, they have a lot more they have a lot more nerve when they're behind a computer. Jenkins, who travels often in his line of work, believes social media can be toxic to a relationship. She sees that I'm in New York and there's people in New York saying, I can't wait to see you. You know, I got my tickets. What are we doing after the show? Like that's going to put bad thoughts into her head. The idea of somebody's looking forward to you being in their town and I'm here, I'm stuck here and I can't supervise it. And making it work is, is difficult. I mean, it takes a lot of work. I mean, somebody has to really trust you and you really have to trust the other person. Hard work, no doubt. Marquez says part of her job is helping couples find common ground and setting boundaries. If you don't have that boundary already established prior to, then when it actually happens, it's like, where did this come from? It's hard because they don't consider it an issue until it becomes an issue. Marquez says if you don't have those boundaries set by your first or second date, you're just wasting your time and setting yourself up for heartache. But what if you're past your first or second date? What if you're engaged to be married? Just photography. Heather Hawkes is at every that step. That's everything I'm telling you. She's in the process of planning her big day. Now we're starting to set budgets and we're starting to figure out who's going to cater, who's going to bake the cake. Heather met the man of her dreams in high school. I always kind of felt something for him. And she's already convinced at a young age that she's ready to marry her fiance, Fago. My favorite thing about him is how he loves me. Like, I just know that there's no one else who can love me the way he loves me. While the pair are preparing to make the ultimate commitment, Jaquez says getting to this point took a lot of work. Social media almost derailed their relationship. This Twitter account randomly tweeted out one day after lunch that Fago had a lot of side chicks alongside me and I was like what the heck is this like I was so I was kind of mad because this is weeks in our relationship we're barely starting to know each other she says communication was key to fixing their online drama you can't believe everything that's on the internet like everyone says so eventually I got over it you have to trust your partner but in some situations finding trust or rather rebuilding it can be a challenge what is it that you value about each other? What is it that you want to restore in your relationship? We have to go one piece at a time and going back and setting the boundaries. Jaquez and her fiance found common ground and have since built an unbreakable trust. If you don't trust your partner, you're not gonna be okay with them doing anything on social media. But that's not the case for everyone. If I'm with someone and I'm seeing their phone going off and God, I'm, I'm asking questions. Who is that? What do they want? Why are they messaging you? Do they know that you're with me? You know, that type of stuff. And, um, and it can cause a problem almost instantly. At this point, shutting down all internet access and social media isn't realistic. But what is realistic? If you think in your mind, I probably shouldn't do this. I shouldn't friend this person or I shouldn't text at another level. Then you probably shouldn't. With the help and support of the community and our family and friends, it uh, makes it possible. But every day that we don't know where she is is another nightmare. five days. No clues.
We have no direction. You can tell by the area that the kids have come out here and played. And you, know, you assume that they might have find something when they're playing under the weeds. Nothing. Sheriff's Office. No sign since October 12th, the last day anyone heard from 22-year-old Zuzu Verk. But one man refuses to call it quits. Every day after lunch, Brewster County Sheriff Ronnie Dotson and his deputy Office. Chase leads. All right, you just let me know, and I can, I'll, I'll have it for you. And turning up empty-handed only pushes them harder and further, stepping into uncharted territory. Our biggest fear is we've missed her. None of us have stopped. I mean, we just don't stop looking. You're not just limited to the, the four square miles of Alpine. You're limited, you know, you still got this other area that goes and goes and goes. Not ruling out anyone, anywhere, or anything making sure they hit every square inch. We've got roads that, that aren't patrolled. We've got roads that nobody goes down for maybe once a week. So all those places have to be looked at. Even finding themselves running into familiar orange flags, a technique used by search teams when Zuzu first disappeared. They would mark the places so that other teams behind them wouldn't come in on them. With each new step, Dotson sees hope. We don't want this to be the one that we left on and didn't get solved. Missing a puzzle piece that lit up the world. You know, as long as she's missing, we're incomplete. It's just devastating. It's like I gotta start all over and depend on somebody else right now. Rochelle Guidry and her nine-year-old son lost nearly everything they owned after flood of waters consumed their home. My bedroom furniture was my dad's grandmother's, over 100-year-old furniture. I mean, it's just totally destroyed. It's already mold growing everywhere. You see how high the water went? There was nothing safe. Her pain can be felt by thousands in Denham Springs, including her next door neighbor, Keith Kelly, whose home is a total loss as well. This total destruction, everything destroyed, all the memories, all the hard, the, the, the hard work that went into to, to buying things that, that we all own, you know, and work so hard for, it's all gone. While thousands like Keith and Rochelle are now in recovery mode, others are still trying to save their home. Those four pumps, are what's pumping all the water away from my house right now. Now it's not up, it's not to where it's gonna get in. I still have probably five, maybe six inches at the most. And that's kind of exaggerating. But as soon as it gets that high, I mean, it's in my house. Pete Bird and his neighbors in St. Gabriel have been fighting to keep flood waters away from their homes for the past four days. So far, he's been successful. But if the flash floods continue like they have been, that could quickly change. Scary when you're about ready to lose everything, you know, uh, your whole life. But with neighbors like Blaze Ragusa, who are keeping a close eye on the water levels and people's homes, Pete has high hopes that everything will be okay. This historic flood may have caused a lot of pain and loss for South Louisiana, but one thing is for sure, it hasn't taken their faith. Louisiana is, is a prideful state. We have a lot of pride in our state, and we are tough as nails, and we will bounce back, I promise. Reporting in Louisiana, Deanne Lopez, CBS 7 News.